name is Dr. Charvian Alawali and today we're going to talk about shoulder problems. We have the a, exclusive privilege to be at the TELUS World of Science at the Body Worlds exhibit in Edmonton, Alberta today. We're going to be using the plastinate models like this beautiful Michael Jordan wannabe right behind me and we're going to talk about shoulder problems today. So what are some of the common causes of shoulder problems? A lot of the times it can be trauma related. For instance, somebody falling on an outstretched arm or repetitive motions such as throwing above head or even lifting above head. You can have people that are involved in sports such as baseball, like the pitcher, or basketball, like the guy behind us, or everyday activities such as picking things up or putting them above head that will lead to repetitive motion that will put stress onto your shoulder area. Some of the symptoms people experience is they'll have difficulty doing everyday tasks such as picking things up, dressing themselves. We'll often have people come in and tell us, I can't even comb my hair or put my clothes on properly. Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Abelson. I'm going to go over some of the biomechanics of this plastinate model. Just an incredible example. We're talking about shoulder injuries here, and we've got to consider what we consider to be kinetic chain relationships. So quite often in our clinic, we'll get somebody who comes in and they have a rotator cuff injury. And they said, you know, I've got a problem right here, and it hurts just right here. But what they're not considering is all these other muscles and where they connect into and some of the relationships of those muscles. For example, the pectoralis major muscle at the front here, if we look over where it connects right across into here, it connects right into the shoulder. So they're thinking, okay, I've got a problem here. Why are you working in this area right here? Because if we look at the connections here, we're going to see how across the fibers from the pectoralis come across here and it basically funnels down here and connects right into the shoulder. Now, if we've got a problem right here, we also have to consider what's going on in the posterior of the body. In other words, let's say I'm contracting my bicep muscle, my tricep has to relax. If my tricep doesn't relax, then basically my bicep has to work a lot harder to get any kind of motion in there. So if we look at the posterior or the back of the body here, we're going to see a lot clearer some of these kinetic chain relationships. For example, we've got a shoulder problem up here. But look at this large muscle that comes across here, the latissimus dorsi, and how it connects right up into the shoulder here. Or how the latissimus dorsi basically goes right under the edge of the trapezius here. So if we get a restriction in this area, this may cause a problem in the latissimus dorsi of the lat here and they'll end up having a shoulder problem. So, one of the big problems of treating sh shoulder injuries is the person comes in and they expect to be treated just right here, so the practitioners get used to treating that area. In reality, they should consider all these other relationships. So if we have a shoulder problem here, we're gonna go in and we're gonna take a look at the rhomboids, the tears muscles, minor major, the infraspinatus, the deltoids, trapezius, three different muscles that connect and join here to form your uh, connection near the elbow down here. Interestingly enough, we may have a problem up here, but at first, even though we know the symptom pattern, we won't know whether it's coming from this area, up in the shoulder, or even down below. So there's a lot of different areas we have to consider in treatment. So what do we do to treat shoulder problems? What we do is we use soft tissue treatment methods such as active release technique and Grosden technique. We find the areas that the patient is tight and restricted. We use our lovely little hands, we get in there and we work on different soft tissue structures, meaning, meaning muscles, ligaments, tendons, and nerves that pass through, through those areas. We find out where our patients are tight and restricted. Oftentimes, several different structures will get intertwined together and will be all tangled up and mangled up. But what we'll do is we'll use our hands and we'll feel for areas that feel ropey, they're tender, there's a nodule-like feeling underneath our hands, and we'll break that scar tissue up, or the adhesions, which is like the sticky parts up. Once we break up those adhesions and the scar tissue, we give our, give our patients some homework to do on their own. That's right, good old-fashioned homework. But the homework that we give them is exercises. So we will give them shoulder exercises to strengthen the muscles in the upper back or we'll give them stretches to open up the muscles in the front, such as the pectoralis area. Now a lot of the times we get people that have shoulder problems, they could be due to just 
bad posture where they're coming in and, and dropping their shoulders forward. So we'll give them some postural awareness exercises where they bring their shoulders back and carry their head back so that the shoulder area doesn't get tight and restricted. A combination of postural awareness exercises, strengthening exercises, stretching exercises, and a little bit of ice on top of that, combined with the treatment that we provide, helps our patients come around very, very well. <coughs>